Let's now take our shock assembly and go back to our main swing arm assembly. Now this file is swing arm assembly two. Inside here, we want to insert components. Notice now in the open documents area, we have shock assembly, shock base, shock multibody, and shock top. Now if we scroll down, we can see a thumbnail preview of the components, or we can simply drag our cursor out into the window. So you notice that shock assembly is exactly what we created, and we can simply place it in our file by hitting OK. Now by default, this is fixed. It's coming in as a fixed component, but let's right click on it, let's float it, and that way we can apply some relations. As we move it around, we need to figure out how we're gonna locate this inside of our 3D space. Ideally, you would have all the components needed to help locate everything, but in reality, we only have a few components. We're gonna be testing the motion. We're really just missing out on a few things. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a few mates to help locate our components. The first thing I wanna do is I'm expanding shock assembly, and I'm looking at its planes. We have a front plane, a top plane, and a right plane. I wanna take the right plane of my shock assembly and the front plane of my swing arm assembly too, Selecting both of those, you'll notice that the quick context menu pops up. I'm gonna make these coincident. What this does is it keeps the shock exactly in line with our plane. It's completely centered here. I can't move it up and down. As you can see, I can move it left and right. It's free to rotate. We're gonna do the exact same thing with our dog bone component. We're gonna take our dog bone, in this case, plane two. This plane two is a mid plane of the component. We're gonna take the front plane of our assembly, holding down the control key as soon as we let it go, We'll make those two coincident. So now it follows the same thing. It can't really move left and right. It simply moves in line or in plane. You can see that we have to move it around and now we can locate it in space. So as we're looking at our file now, we want to start to apply some relations between these components and our layout sketch. So we're going to take the inside face of the shock on the upper side, control select the circle, and we're going to make them concentric. If we go back to a front view, we can now take the shock and you can rotate it around that point. But one thing you'll notice is the shock isn't compressing. We aren't able to shorten it. So its stroke is staying the same. Now there's a very good reason for this. And this is something that happens very commonly. It's a very common question to come up. By default, when you insert a sub assembly into an assembly. So if we collapse everything here and we look at this, we have a part, you can see the icon is a little bit different and we have an assembly. Now, right now it has the red and green in front of it. It just needs to be rebuilt. This tells us that we have a sub assembly or really an assembly within assembly. And by default, when you have an assembly in an assembly, it comes in as what's called rigid. Rigid only means that all of the sub components are fixed in relation to each other. If we go to the document properties, inside of here, we have the option to go from rigid to flexible. Now flexible doesn't mean that you can start bending all the solid components, but if we make it flexible, it will now allow us to actually solve and adhere to all the mates inside of that subassembly file. You'll also notice that the icon changes a little bit. Let's rebuild the document, and now we see that we have that same sort of T-shaped part in the little blue box telling us that it's an assembly, but that little blue block is now able to move around a little bit. So this icon is new for SOLIDWORKS 2016. It looked a little bit different in SOLIDWORKS 2015, but it's a good way to quickly tell whether or not your sub-assemblies are rigid or flexible. So now that we know that this can move up and down, we can go ahead and apply another mate. We wanna take the inside section of the back of our shock linkage or dog bone, control select this hole and make those concentric. So now when we look at it, the shock is free to move. We can expand it and this is free to rotate. So hopefully you can start to see what we're trying to do. We're trying to make an assembly that allows us to move these components around and figure out really where they should be in relation to each other. Let's go ahead and do a save as and call this swing arm assembly three.